I don't like being compared to nobody else because, you know, my story ain't been written yet. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I, I've closed certain chapters. That's about it. But the next chapter, you can't determine. And people try to determine that through comparisons. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're the new this, so it must go this way. You must do this next. Nah, you can't write my next chapter for me. So I don't allow people to, you know, make their comparisons my new reality. You put this on your um, your uh, Instagram, uh, I don't know if it was live a while back. I think somebody had compared you to, like, uh, Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. You probably get this yeah, comparison yeah, all the time. Yeah, you yeah, like... Yeah. You can't compare me to him because what he thought was right or what he did back in his times was during his time. Yeah. This is a new day and age. This is my time. And Malcolm X was great for all intent and purposes. Malcolm X was one of the greatest orators and communicators in the history of existence. Right? He's up there with the top of the top. People talk they top rappers. I think about my top orators mm. in history. He's on that list. I think Malcolm X was a very righteous man and individual and his attempt to, you know, give us freedom, justice, equality, and human rights, right? What we deserve. And, you know, when you look at Malcolm X's life, you see somebody who didn't step into righteousness till, you know, he was in his, you know, I believe 30s, mm. I imagine. And I was thinking about this just the other day because we was having this conversation on, and it's like, if Malcolm X was born in this day and age, Right. He would have been and, and, and he was popular. He would have been counseled because he would have been with white women. He would have been doing drugs. He would have been pimping. He would have had been putting chemicals in his hair. He would have been everything that you consider a coon to be. Mm. Right. But you didn't allow him to get the teachings that will allow him to get that knowledge of self that will transform him. Right. And transform his thinking to become the man he could be. And oftentimes we destroy people before we get to see their legacy extended to something greater because we always talking about counseling instead of challenging people. Mm. I challenge you to be greater, mm. right? I'm not going to counsel you because of your faults. You're supposed to go through those lessons. The question is, who do you become after those lessons? Because mm. now we get to say, I'm glad he made that mistake. Now let me see what he does next, right? But we say, oh, he made a mistake. Let's get him out of there. That's not how great ones are made. Mm. Otherwise, we would have nobody great in none of our histories because we would take those singular moments that is now seen in the broadcast and the sheep that have made the same exact mistakes or similar ones would hold this person up to an expectation that they don't hold themselves up and then want to destroy you. It goes back to the old saying, you can't throw stones in a glass house, mm, 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 right? Mm. And everybody living in these glass houses, but they want to throw stones as if, you know, they sins and they flaws are not equal to the person that they judge it. So for me, you know, just going back to the Malcolm thing, I think Malcolm was a man that was in the route of his development. Mm. And the government killed him before we even got to see his full development. Mm. And by killing him and assassinating him, we didn't get to see the full development of the black nation and the black culture and this black conscious movements that we had grown. We seen it stop at certain points when leaders were killed and people held on to that. They didn't think about the maturation of what it would have been if they would have continued and prolonged. Because we don't need what was there at the end point. We need what would have happened if they stayed living. Mm. Yo, it's, you touch on so much, bro. And this is crazy because you're going crazy. We're like 10 minutes in. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, hold up. All right. So we talk about not canceling somebody, right? Mm -hmm. But like I feel like, like you said, you you can't really tell who a person is until you see how they act in a moment of mm -hmm. adversity. Like that's who you, how you, how you could tell who a man is, right? When he go through something, when he got his back against the wall. Mm -hmm. But it's also funny because we talked about the the Malcolm X um, comparison or just com talking about Malcolm X, and I feel like the nation kicked him out because he what he didn't abide by certain rules. And I, I don't know the the full um, story behind it, but he was kicked out because he didn't like, basically like follow the rules of the nation, right? It's a very nuanced story, but you got to think, in, in, and not even to personalize it to Malcolm, I, it happens in any organization. Yes. In any organization. No, no one man is ever bigger than the program. Exactly. Right? The goal wasn't to follow, right, Malcolm X. The goal was to follow the program that would get us to where we need to be. Exactly. Now, many people contextualize it 50 years later after his assassination, right? But if he was alive, would you follow him? Mm. Right? And some people say, yeah. I don't believe you at all because who do you follow while you living today? Mm. you telling me that there's not programs, there's not teachings that he followed, there's not blueprints to where you to walk in that same path, right? So it's like the Nation of Islam, its goal was for black people to be able to have freedom, justice, and equality in Islam and a nation within a nation, 
right? That was its goal, mm. right? Malcolm X said that his goal later was to build human rights. But at the same time, he tried to get back in connection and he was in communication to have that consolation with the nation, right? He, that was disrupted. Right. By outside forces that didn't want to see that rejoining of those black minds come together, because what would have been the most powerful thing is that that collaboration came back again. That unity was was brought back to the forefront. When you got to think about the future, because right now, like we focus on building out this 2044 plan. Mm. You want to control the future. Don't just think 10 years. Ahead. You got to think 20, 30 years. It changes the way you think about the future. So the question is, is like, all right the longevity of Malcolm's plan, and then people always talk Malcolm, but you also have to talk Elijah Muhammad every sure, time. 100%. Right? So you have to say, what was Elijah Muhammad's plan? What was he doing? Mm -hmm. Right? Because I think that that's a more important part of that conversation. Right? He loved Malcolm X. Right? But he had a plan that wasn't political. Right? His plan was to create a nation to where we were a separate entity and we had ownership and class of our own. Right. And he had an economic blueprint for that. He had businesses that he already had developed. They were bringing in millions and millions of dollars. Right. He had a plan for black people to get reparations. He advocated that every single chance that he got. But he also understood that we wouldn't find no freedom, justice or equality in politics. Mm -hmm. Right. He believed that we was going to do that in doing for self. Right. And nobody else on this planet Earth can show me a man and his teachings that have reformed and transformed the world greater, right, than the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the last 100 years. Mm. Not one. And it's funny that we don't talk about that legacy more because it's like the question becomes is who is this man and how the hell he do it? How you go from having a third grade education, growing up on a small farm, right, seeing your parents get attacked by the Ku Klux Klan, Right. Starting off as a, in, in a Baptist religion. Right. And then getting some knowledge of self and then that transforming you from a mission from a three and a half year stay from your master teacher. Right. And then you go and teach the world and it actually works. Mm. Right. And he didn't just teach about what we are talking now on pie. He taught about astronomy. Mm. He taught about economics. He was the first to have this conversation about UFOs. Mm. Right. The first you talking about a man coming up in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. This is a very interesting fact about our history in America that it's, it's not talked about because it's overshadowed by the assassination of Malcolm X. Mm. The question is, what are the more important conversations for the future? And, and, and it's funny because that's the conversation I wanted to have, not necessarily the future. You introduced that, but. Not about Malcolm X and what he did, but just that relationship between him getting kicked out of the nation because he didn't follow the rules, whatever the rules may be. Right? I'm trying to be respectful. Well, I think it was a, it was a, it was. It's a very known thing. It was simple. They asked him not to speak on certain political situations. He spoke on it, mm -hmm. right? And that was a situation where he had to be silenced for uh, a certain amount of days, and then he spoke again during his silencing period. So it was like a double action, and then that created a conflict but that transformed into multiple things. That right there, though. Right. We talk about these greats and, 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 and for lack of better words, loving them through and seeing their potential. And it's kind of like we we all have to go. Th it seems like the yeah. greats have to go through it because the same thing. It ain't about the reason why. It's just the fact that it happened. Right. Mm -hmm. He went against the nation. Right. And he had to be silenced for it. And mm -hmm. it's like still to this day, it's like history repeats itself in different ways. Right. Like it's like we talk about when being canceled and how we should. I don't know, love people through it or wait to see see them on the other side. But it's like, it's the same thing. People are used to something. The world has rules, right, that we think are normal. And when you go against those rules or whatever we think, whatever the most people deem is normal, then you get silenced for it. And it's like, ah, where's the balance? What's the in between? It's, it's, it's different if you're thinking about the way the nation silenced you. It wasn't kicking you out. It was, it was a period of mm. saying that, you're not silenced forever. It could be 30 days. It could be 60 days, mm. right? And why? You have to think about the way entities and organizations are formed, right? And you have to think about, because it's not a bad thing. If America wanted to silence you because you was promoting pedophilia and then you get canceled, yes, because we don't want that culture to be normalized. For sure. That's great. That goes against, that will be anti-culture. That's extreme. Right? 
Right, I go to social media. That's example. the extremes, right? But that's what we're dealing with today. We're dealing with voices that are outspoken, and if they don't follow along with mainstream thought, then they get counseled, right? But who is behind the counseling? Who decides, right, who is the ultimate, you know, person that can control media and get everybody to be on their side to say that we don't like this voice, get rid of them, don't do business with them, don't give them no ad dollars, nothing, mm. right? We was at Revolt World. Why Revolt World sponsored by Walmart, not AT&T like they were? Because mm. AT&T decided to say that, no, we're not going to continue to support you because we don't like some things you're doing on your platform, mm. right? So it's it's an economic, right, silencing that we deal with. Now, when you're talking about any organization on the planet Earth has to have rules in order to maintain structure and order, right? right? And balance, why? Because when you create an entity, you create it with rules, you create it with these rituals that have to be maintained and sustained so that the foundation that the organization is built on is not destroyed. Mm. Right. So when you're talking about coming up in a militant discipline, yes, the generals and the soldiers have to move in accordance. Right. To the interests. Right. Of the goals of that nation. They can't go against the goals of that nation. Like I said, I love Malcolm X to this day. He's one of the greatest tours ever to exist. And I just think that the conversation is being the dead horse because I believe if Malcolm was here today, he would be supporting the upliftment of black people in America. Not for sure. Right? He will be supporting the Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam will be supportive of him. I think that any black man that stands up for the people should always be supported. I think that we look at one point of history and time with a lack of reconciliation, and that doesn't benefit us to have the conversations about the, those times. It benefits them that that becomes a reason that we're not connected. Mm. says his legacy is not his assassination. His legacy is the life that he lived, right, and his intervention for us to have freedom, justice, and equality. Malcolm X was great because he was able to do great things. He was able to go speak around the world, and he was able to teach himself. He read that he read and consumed the dictionary so that he could have a better vocabulary to communicate to the masses, right? When they looked at his autopsy, they said he had one of the cleanest bodies that they ever seen. That means he was eating right. He was, he was a man that was trying to live to a certain moral constitution. We're studying the wrong parts of his life. Mm -hmm. The greater parts of his life to be in admiration of is what made him great, right? Not the opposition that went against him. The mm. opposition went against him because if we had a million Malcolm X in the world, if we had 19 million Malcolm X, if we had a, a, a however many black men in America were like him, then we would solve our issues. Mm. We're not going to solve them by asking what was the issue between him and the only standing nation that we have in between us, right, in light and darkness. Mm.